Hi everyone! Today I wanted to talk to you about something I've wanted to talk about for four years, but wanted to hold off until I finished my degree so that I could most succinctly and accurately relay my experience going to a liberal arts college and what my thoughts and advice are for you. This is going to be all of my opinion and this is going to be from the perspective of someone who has been successfully freelancing before college. I was making more money when I was 18 starting the liberal arts college experience than I was at any part-time job I could get at the time. And I was also at a point where I was monthly making enough where I could have moved out and maintained a living for myself. So that is where we are going to start with my experiences and thoughts on a liberal arts college. This might not be your own experience or these might not be your circumstances. So my advice or thoughts might not apply to you, but if you're here and you're following me specifically and you want to know my thoughts, they are what I'm going to be sharing and I'm not going to be sugarcoating anything. First off, I wanted to say that this piece is going to be a new print in my upcoming shop update later this month. I'm going to be opening my shop up for the very first time in a good amount of time um, because I have graduated college and have more time to put into things like packaging orders in my shop and putting out products. So if you are interested in updates with my shop, you can Go follow my Instagram to stay up to date with what I am doing and to see all the artwork that I am currently working on. And you can also see the full real-time process for today's piece on my Patreon. I've updated my tiers slightly and I'm going to be doing some competitions that will be giving away tablets, electronics, art supplies for patrons who are active. So if you want to go to my Patreon and learn more about that, it's going to be linked down in my description. Before I get started on the topic of this video, I wanted to say a quick thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Class topics include illustration, graphic design, photography, animation, film, fine art, and more. Skillshare is for lifelong learners, real working creatives, beginners, pros, dabblers, and masters. And Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project. Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and skill level with most classes being under 60 minutes with short lessons and the members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. One class that I would recommend for you if you're interested in learning more about ink drawing is Ink Drawing Techniques Brush, Nib, and Pen Style by Yuko Shimizu. She's an illustrator and instructor at the School of Visual Arts. And this class is a glimpse into Yuko's personal critique process. I definitely encourage you to watch this if you're looking for some creativity and learning a couple of new techniques when it comes to your artwork. Premium membership for Skillshare is less than $10 a month. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get 30% off an annual Skillshare Premium Membership. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring me and letting me make videos for you guys and continue on with my freelancing journey. I really appreciate them. So again, this is going to be from the perspective of someone who was successfully freelancing before college. These are my opinions and somebody else will have a different experience. So to give you a little bit of background about me i'm sarah if you don't know me i am a freelance illustrator and i just graduated summa cum laude with a bachelor of fine arts and graphic design and i also have two minors in studio arts and photography i chose to major in graphic design rather than studio arts because my forte is illustration and i knew whatever college i went to i wasn't going to learn a substantial amount going to school for studio arts so I decided to major in graphic design since I knew absolutely nothing about it and thought it could help my marketing and my presentation when I graduated. To let you know a little bit about the specifics of how I got into college and what my activities and like extracurricular activities were at college, I want to tell you a little bit about all of that. This is not at all supposed to be bragging. I just want to let you know the realistic facts of how I got into college and what I did in college. So I went into college with a full scholarship that I received as a merit-based scholarship. I went in with an ACT score of 33 and I also maintained a full scholarship throughout my four years. While I was at school, I did about 17 
or 19 credit hours a semester and about 200 hours of community service total. Usually recommended for like a regular bachelor is around 15 credit hours a semester. I did about 17 or 18 credits in a semester because I was also doing two minors. My extracurricular activities in the meantime were I was on student government one year, I was in multiple art shows at the school and in the downtown art gallery, and I was also part of the Art Honor Society. I also maintained a federal work study for two years, being paid minimum wage, and I completed one unpaid internship and one unpaid practicum, although I do want to say that the company I worked for with the practicum was very kind, I have a good relationship with them, and they compensated me with a gift at the end of my practicum, so I don't want to be complaining so much about them, although the practicum was unpaid. I also got three speeding tickets in relation to school, which I think is important when you factor in the amount of stress and like quote-unquote sacrifices that I made for going to school. So first off, I'm going to start off with the pros of my thoughts of going to a liberal arts college, which are not many and I have a lot more cons, but the pros are very important to be honest. So the very first pro, it's going to be in anybody's mind, is getting a degree, which is unfortunately insanely important if you're planning on working for any sort of company. If you're not planning on freelancing and you're planning on working with a company in a full-time position where you do get health insurance, a designated social security, and the money taken out of your taxes when you get your paychecks so you don't have to do your own taxes yourself, if you want like a regular 9-to-5 job, you probably need a degree. I tried to apply multiple times for full-time or part-time jobs that required a degree, just a bachelor's. When I was in school and was not able to get to the interview stage for any of them, and I'm sure that's because I don't have a degree, I had a good portfolio, and I fit the characteristics and qualifications of those job descriptions except for having a bachelor's degree. So the very first pro is you are going to be getting that little paper in your hand that you've worked for for four years and you've paid $120,000, which is the biggest pro, obviously, of people going to college. The second good thing about going to college is forming connections with professors, other artists who are as passionate as you are and have potential to create artwork, and I know that's kind of a utilitarian way to look at people. The connections you form with professors and other students or peers is one of the most valuable parts of the college experience that you really can't mimic in any other environment. So this more so depends on the professors or other students that you have classes with somehow having connections that could be beneficial for you. Not every professor is going to be a good connection for you or have opportunities available for you or even like you to provide you those opportunities. So this is kind of a gamble, but I would say that the connections that I have formed with certain professors and certain artistic people at college have been beneficial to myself, not in such a major way, but I can imagine if you went to a more prestigious college or something that is in a more centralized city, that could be something that was super useful for you. The third pro is forming connections with other creatives like photographers, videographers, and musicians. This can aid you in being able to create more well-rounded content. And because you're on the same like age bracket and skill level with these other photographers, videographers, and musicians, you can sort of create work for each other as compensation for each other. So for a musician, you could create cover art and in response, they could create a piece of music for you. Videographer could also film something for you, etc. So forming connections with other creatives can help you in a sense receive free marketing and work but you're paying that other creative with your own work. So that's however you want to take it. If you want to work in a collaborative sense, having those connections with people that are about the same age and skill set as you is extremely important and also encouraging to be around people that are like-minded and are creative. My last pro, if I can think of anything else, I will list it down in the description. But my last pro is being pushed out of your comfort zone and being part of activities or clubs or events that you would normally not go to. So one way that I was part of activities, clubs, or events was being in an art honor society, um, which wasn't that big of a deal to be honest. My brother went to the same college that I went to and I hung out a lot with his computer science and engineering friends. And that was something that I would not have 
you know, naturally been a part of if I hadn't had that connection been at college, which would be, be that venue for those experiences. That's something fairly rudimentary when you're thinking about um, the college experience. You know, it's something that you're probably going to take for granted, but it is important, especially if you want to be more outgoing or to be more charismatic and you're kind of introverted like myself or a little bit awkward like myself, being constantly put into these social situations might really help you break out of your shell and learn how to be more sociable and connect with others better so it can just help your presence in a sense your development as a human as a person i want to talk about the cons now my very first one it is a waste of time plain and simple i've talked to some other people that i know about the same thing a specifically a liberal arts college is going to be a huge waste of time for my college the gen eds were worth 50 credit hours of my degree and my major specific classes were worth 70 credit hours so to explain exactly what a gen ed would be because it might seem like general art history no a class to teach you how to research as if you never wrote a research paper in high school it doesn't teach you more than what you knew writing a research paper in high school but it's 16 weeks of writing tens of papers about topics you do not care about. Math classes. As an art student, why do you need a math class? You really don't. The math that you need to know, you already know. And the math that you're going to learn in school, I guarantee you, you are not going to remember because it does not apply to your degree whatsoever. The point of a liberal arts college is that you can be well-rounded in a bunch of topics such as science, history, art if you know you're a computer science major you're going to still take an art class but that even as an artist the art class that you take as a gen ed is such a watered down version of the very first introductory class that you take on art history like your first like 114 115 class so gen eds have such little substance and so much busy work in them where they just are a waste of time they're almost half of the time you spent in college, but you're not spending that time in your specialized degree, something you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars to get so that you can work in that field. My second thought is something that I will link down in the description. Two YouTubers I watch, Nicole Raffi and Hannah Elise have talked about. Their videos were excellent and such a good descriptor. They didn't, they're not art students, but their experience with college was exactly my experience with college, so if you want to watch those videos, I will link them down in the description. But games and events are a distraction that you will feel guilty about not attending. So between the FOMO of not attending and going to these games and events that your friends who aren't art majors are going to, and then being aware of how many hundreds of dollars you're spending for these amenities and events, you're going to feel pressured to attend. So I felt pressured to attend football games. Guess who doesn't care about football? Me. Guess who spent so many hours of my life going to football games for no reason with people that hypothetically enjoyed football games and would leave before the second quarter was finished? Something that made absolutely no sense to me because as somebody who wasn't into football and was trying to get into football, I would assume that the third and fourth quarters would be the most exciting parts of the game because the game is barely getting started by the end of the second quarter. Make it make sense, please. But apart from the occasional I'm gonna go to the hockey game because I kind of enjoy hockey. There aren't a lot of events that are really worth your time and that if you don't go to, you are technically spending hundreds of dollars for, but you're not attending. So why are you spending that money? You can't choose to have a gym membership or to pay for your tickets for the games. You, they're just taken out of your tuition. You have a gym membership that you can see how much the gym costs and you can't take that off of your tuition, which is absolutely insane to me because what if you don't even want to work out at your college gym and what if you're going to pay for a membership at a different gym? It just absolutely makes no sense. But you're being billed on so many things that you might otherwise not care about or not be interested in. And even with that money that you're spending, I think it's even more valuable to think about how much time you're wasting trying to fit into 
this system or these events that you would rather not be part of just so that you can maintain friendships with people that are interested in those things there's absolutely nothing wrong in you know hanging out with people that enjoy football or hockey games or going to bingo nights obviously that's completely fine and that's part of the college experience if it's something you really truly desire but as somebody who I am introverted. I had a successful freelancing business before I attended college. I I already had friendships that were meaningful and deep with many people. I didn't need to go to a bingo night to meet people. So the fact that I'm being billed for this stuff is just like, ugh, it's frustrating. I can't take it out of my tuition and I'm spending thousands of dollars on this tuition. Um, this is maybe confusing because you're like, okay, you got a full ride, why are you complaining? A full ride doesn't actually cover everything i still have sixteen thousand dollars of debt so i am salty about it my fourth con is that you have to live off campus if you want any sort of privacy or creative time i lived on campus for two years there were different types of dorms at my college and i chose the dorms that are sort of like a little apartment you live in a room with two other girls or one other girl and then there's nine girls in that dorm so three rooms in that dorm apartment and you have a kitchen you have washer and dryer so it's like a tiny apartment it was it was like the best setup to me out of any of the rooming situations at college so i enjoyed that because we had a kitchen and we had a washer and a dryer however there is absolutely no space in a dorm to have an art space there's barely enough room for your twin bed let alone for books for college or having the art supplies that you even need to take to class, let alone the ones that you need to create art for your business. So I moved out of the dorms my junior year. The college that I went to is particularly strict, doesn't let students move off campus unless they're 21. There are special exceptions that you can make. Um, and so for myself, I said I needed space for my business and also I was turning 21 in two months within my um, junior year so i was allowed to move off campus and actually had space for all my art supplies my shop stuff my fifth con is that you will spend hundreds of dollars on books and art supplies that you will never need at the end of the semester the amount of art supplies i bought for the dumbest art classes that i never ended up needing or books that i spend hundreds of dollars on that the professor never even opened is a travesty i've spent thousands of dollars on supplies for classes that don't teach you anything other than a surface level amount of like introductory material for that specific class and course and you know you just have these art supplies you're never going to use again because you take a ceramic or 3d class um they barely teach you anything about it and you bought 50 pounds of clay you still have 40 pounds of clay at the end of the semester but they told you to buy 50 pounds they didn't tell you to buy 10 pounds they told you to buy 50. so the amount of extra art supplies that i will never need and i bought for school is just ridiculous my junior year i stopped buying books and art supplies before classes started and a lot of times would just bs my way through quizzes and exams because the information was in a sense so common general knowledge or something i could find on the internet where it didn't justify me paying 200 dollars for a textbook that i was going to open like a couple of times so just books are expensive the next con for myself which is particularly sad is that most of the major specific classes are mainly completion based rather than based on skill this is in regards to a liberal arts college that is not specifically an art college maybe this is my experience as a good artist and somebody that professors saw like oh i have a following or a youtube channel or i am serious about my artwork so they just didn't care to give me any critique but you should take in consideration that I was majoring in graphic design and something that I am not at all versed in and something that I learned through college. The introductory class for Illustrator was the first time I ever used Illustrator. So my graphic design isn't great, but there were only about three professors that encouraged me to excel in the classes that I was in. Most of the classes didn't give me constructive criticism or critique, especially in junior and senior year. Those classes were a joke. The professors would not show up to class. There's only a certain amount of times that a professor can cancel class and many of the professors were barely there half the time. And professors are supposed to reply to emails within 48 hours and many professors never reply to any emails I sent them. 
emails that were directly based on my grades and upcoming grades and oftentimes junior and senior year i had absolutely no contact with my professors and they did not care to you know personally answer questions or to show me how i can improve in specific areas so except for just a handful of professors and i one of the things that i know is that faculty is fairly underpaid and overworked and so this isn't something where like i'm salty towards these professors specifically but if you're going there with the expectation that every professor is going to pay so much attention to you and give you one-on-one -on -one knowledge and critique it's not going to happen especially from my experience and <laughs> going to a private university that um the tuition is thirty five thousand dollars a year it's not a little bit of money it's quite a lot of money there should be a bar set higher for how much faculty is paid and how faculty interacts and encourages students and gives constructive critique so i did have a couple of professors that i absolutely love and i still keep in contact with who were helpful and really did inspire my you know graphic design and just my artistic journey but the vast majority of professors just were detached they did not have time to worry about me or focus on me so my projects were basically graded on completion i got about the same grades and for every project regardless of how much work i put into it if i you know put it in on time and marketed it or had like a good little synopsis of what the project was i basically got the same grade for every project another con is that you'll have to complete a most likely unpaid internship in which you'll be working full-time i think this is unacceptable to be honest um something that i was extremely upset about going to college and i voiced this you know being upset to multiple people i was like this is just not cool it doesn't matter where i got my skills i've been self-taught but as somebody who can pay her own bills with her artwork and with her business i found it extremely offensive to not be paid for an internship and work full-time for somebody who did not value my time as something to be paid it makes absolutely no sense of how businesses can just use interns without paying them it's something that you'll probably stumble into if you're going to a liberal arts college and it's something that is totally not cool it's pretty abusive in my opinion and it's something that happens basically to every student and i don't think it's called for especially when you're putting in so much work and energy into this degree to not have your work valued but to like be forced to work for something that probably is not going to add to your portfolio is really sucky so if anything, you know, your goal in college is going to be to get a paid internship that can count towards your degree. But I just want to tell you that as if you look up to me as an artist and you think I'm oh, this successful, I wasn't paid for my internship and businesses and anybody I reached out to did not value me enough to pay me for my internship because they know they can get free work. And if I don't fill that position, somebody else who has a good skill set will. So it's just not cool. I don't agree with it. I don't think it's cool. So it's a big downside to going to college the biggest con for me personally was and this is the last con that i have listed down is that i lost touch with my audience and so my engagement has plummeted severely i am not on that upward trajectory that i was going into college with my income and with my engagement um i don't want to be dramatic but in the past couple of years school made me really struggle with my income and i've had so much anxiety and stress related to money um, because you might have this like fantasy or fairy tale idea of how much an artist makes or how much an influencer makes and for me personally i don't achieve those numbers none of what you will see online of these creators making this amount of money i don't make that i don't even have savings at the moment and it's something that like really does suck but college for multiple reasons debilitated my <laughs> my art business and my freelancing so i'm very happy i'm so glad to have graduated and so that i can you know rebuild all of that and up my engagement take my creativity back to where it used to be and to be able to put effort into my art and into engaging with my audience that i so much care for um, being able to put out regular content and post that's something that's important to me but the fact that I haven't had time for weekly uploads, multiple posts a week, collaboration with fellow artists, or even experimenting with my own personal work, not even having time for personal work, is one of the biggest downsides of college and having gone to college with my experience. 
So my takeaway is that if you're planning on going to school for the actual education rather than for a degree or connections, I do not recommend a liberal arts college at all. If you know where you want to go in your art career already, if you want to be a freelancer or any job that does not require a degree, I do not recommend a liberal arts college. And lastly, if you have a business which can support you as much as a part-time or a full-time job, I do not recommend going to school. Unless you're going to want to be involved in an industry that requires a bachelor degree or a master's degree, the biggest reason to go to school is to get a degree so you can get a job, but the degree doesn't equal a skill set. A degree is just all of this busy work and time that and money that you spent being miserable, but that doesn't necessarily aid your portfolio or your creativity or your abilities. College drained the creativity out of me and it left me exhausted and mentally overstimulated. I had multiple panic attacks because of school. I experienced anxiety and overwork, overschooling that did not add to my portfolio or skill set. As I mentioned before, I got three speeding tickets because I was working on so many things, most late to class or late to submitting a project or this or that, you know, which is not cool. I don't have any other speeding tickets that are not related to school. Um, so even the stress of like, okay, I had to pay my speeding tickets and I had my points on my license because of that is just well, <laughs> rough. And then lastly, my last takeaway is that my quality of life was low in almost every way related to school. I had a lot of um, mental health issues because of school and because of how my worth was related to school and how my work was valued going to college, um, which was to say very little <laughs> very few people valued me even the dean of the arts program didn't act in a rude way towards me at all but he really admired my work and was telling me how much he loved my work how much i should get a master's program at the school and then told me to apply for a job working in the department that was minimum wage <laughs> like where's the correlation between saying you really value my artwork and then being an artist yourself and then offering an art student a minimum wage job. It doesn't cover my time or expenses for my computer, my hard drives, any of that. So I just personally didn't feel valued at all going to school. This is the biggest rant ever. But this is four years in the making of me sitting there being like, I'm not going to make my video sophomore year because I'm going to wait till I graduate college to wrap up all of my experiences. And there's all these tiny things that have been building up over these four years that I'm so frustrated with and think are so unfair. And now that I've had the full experience, I want to share them with you so that you fully understand what the experience might be. Of course, this might not be your experience. If you're going for the reasons like the pros that I, told, that I talked about, or if you don't have an art business and want to learn more and want to get a degree, you know, have a more conventional path, it, it might be a good, really good time for you. I know a lot of people that enjoyed college, but I wasn't one of the people to party and not care about my grades. I had to get A's in every single class. I, I couldn't be the person to get a C and be okay just because of the way that my family forced me to perform and excel. You know, not giving 100% was never an option for me. And so if you have the same sort of mentality or are extremely serious about your career path or your work, you're probably not going to enjoy it because you're going to be with people that are not the same maturity level as you. Again, that's completely fine. If you are somebody who enjoys football games and you're getting an engineering degree or you want to be on campus and don't care about having a bunch of art supplies or having a business, it's completely fine. But there is so much hype built around college culture and college life and it being the best four years of your life, which I don't think is accurate at all. I mean, even thinking that every single person will have different experiences and come from different backgrounds and have different expectations for school that I think that's so important to consider when you're thinking about a cookie cutter education for every single person. My alternatives, which not a lot of these I have done, but I would assume speaking from anecdotal experience that I've heard from peers and friends, I have a couple of alternatives to a liberal arts college education for you. First off would be daily practice and personal goals set by your own self. This sounds probably so cheesy to you or so ineffective, but 
my best growth was before I went to college where I could daily practice and post online and set personal goals for my own self, for my YouTube, for my videos, for the content I wanted to create. And I've grown since then because it's been four years, but the amount of creativity and time that I spent in my artwork and joy that I had for my artwork really did propel the way that I viewed art and learned art and marketing and setting myself up as an independent freelance creator so you can set your own timeline and set your own goals for your business that school won't help you with going to a school specialized in art like scad or ringling i have obviously not been to a specialized art college but i can assume that the education you would get there would be so much more comprehensive than a liberal arts college because at least those 50 credit hours of gen eds are not going to be gen eds they're going to be somehow art related education is going to be much more well-rounded and specialized and one other thing i want to mention is that the school that i went to had bachelor of fine arts and bachelor of sciences a bachelor of fine arts was a pre-selected degree completion plan that had every single class that you had to take there were no free electives a bachelor of science which is what most everybody that i knew got had 30 free credit hours so you could take a scuba class if you wanted to or like a basket weaving class which is great it's nice to have options but also if you really think about the amount of money you're putting into this education for art and then having 50 hours of gen eds 40 hours of specialization and 30 hours of free credits that do not have to apply to art you're really spending 40 credit hours in your specialized degree for art over four years which is absolutely not that essentially is a little bit over two semesters it makes absolutely no sense so i don't i don't know how much i recommend a liberal arts college my fourth alternative is to take specific classes at a local or community college for the classes that you're interested in you can spend a couple of hundred dollars for specific classes that you know you're going to get a lot out of and if you do especially with a local or community college you're not going to be spending thousands and thousands of dollars for an education if you want the experience of having a faculty member you know reach out to you and talk to you and have one-on-one -on -one conversation about a, even like a figure drawing class or pottery you you can just take that one class not towards a degree but just for your own growth and even though that might seem like a little bit antithetical you're like okay well i'm spending money on this class but it's not counting toward a degree i have debt towards a school that barely taught me anything that that money went into football games and hockey games and bingo nights that i didn't even go to like it makes no sense <laughs> Lastly, um, my last alternative to going to a liberal arts college is to continue to build your business and audience by regularly posting and interacting with your audience. If you want to be a freelancer, you do not need to go to college. Go to college if you want to learn all these skills and don't go to a liberal arts college if you want to learn all these skills. A liberal arts college might be the easiest way for you to get a degree because you can BS your way through 50 credit hours of gen eds. But if you're looking for an education, which is what you're paying for, there is no reason to go to a liberal arts college. Bottom line, do I regret having gone to the college that I went to? I can't so much regret going to this college because if I didn't go here, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to buy this beautiful house that I live in now or to have met my boyfriend or to have met some of my close friends or to even have my two cats. And so the life that I have now would just not have existed if I hadn't been here. But it's more of being in the wrong place at the right time rather than the college experience itself being something that was beneficial to me so i don't like to live with regrets i don't regret having gone to the college that i went to but it was draining and exhausting and something that i will just have a i paid i have a sixteen thousand dollar loan for a piece of paper that i don't even intend on using so my experience and my thoughts summarized are i do not recommend you now know my opinion and what i have gone through and you can decide for your own life and for your own goals what you wish to do and so if, if this is something that you want to pursue my opinion should not dissuade you if you're not in the same boat as me um if you're in the same boat as me take it as a warning 
if you want that college life and that college experience and don't care so much about your education rather than as much as you do the lifestyle and the culture of college, I think you would enjoy, enjoy college if that's your goal. But that wasn't my goal and I did not enjoy college. So <laughs> thank you so much for listening to my rant. I got so heated. But as I said before, this has been four years in the making and college has made me sacrifice so many things, so much mental health and so much of my engagement and my growth that I could have had for my business. So I'm so ready to be over and graduation was like the happiest, one of the happiest days of my life. Um, and I'm just very excited to have your support and to have had your support during this time because I really couldn't have done it without patrons still backing me while I wasn't posting anything on Patreon because I was too busy and sad with school. So having you guys made it all so meaningful to me that I had support during this time and was able to come out of the other end, you know, with like hope that I'm like, okay, I can still get back into my business, into my artwork. Um, so I'm I'm grateful for the opportunities I've had, but um, if you're like me and you work really, really hard, I don't know if I could really recommend spending so much money and time into an experience that at the end of the day, you only just get a piece of paper for. So those are my opinions. <laughs> I'm not sure if I will have much more to say about college after this video just because this was very long and encompassed a lot of my thoughts on my education but I'm very happy to go forward and be able to create more and thank you for being here, thank you for listening to me, let me know what your thoughts are if you went to a liberal arts college, what you think, if you went to a specialized college, a community college if you have a business, what are your thoughts? I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos because I'm trying to put them out. The goal is for every week and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>